welcome to a new video I hope you're having an amazing day and in this video I'll be painting watercolor carrots but before I walk you through the steps I took the materials I used my Winsor & Newton brushes my fill butt brush in the size 2 my round brushes in the sizes 3 and 5 my Montmartre watercolor set my Canson 300 GSM mixed media sketchbook and my Lakeland water soluble pencils. So onto painting the carrots, I drew the outline of where I wanted my carrots to be, drawing them small and cute, and following the same simplified illustrative style that I did with my beetroots last week. I drew it with an orange watercolour pencil so that my pencil can blend in with the orange paint later. I used a light green pencil for the stems. I didn't draw in the leaves as I wanted this to be looser, but also I partially forgot about them and didn't think about how to paint them, but I guess this is a recurring pattern of going with the flow and figuring it out as it comes. So, painting the carrots, keeping it nice and simple. Using the same technique as my beetroots, I used a wet on dry technique firstly, but instead of doing it in washes, I went straight in with a punch of colour and then using a wet on wet technique to adding the darker tones of orange for the shadows allowing it to blend and do its thing. The less you fight what the paint wants to do, the better. The trick is to figuring out how to make it do what it wants to do the way you want it to do. That was an overly complicated way of phrasing it, but hopefully you know what I mean. You need to know how to work with it. So, making sure when you are doing this first layer to leave some room for the highlights. Now, there are many ridges on carrots that are horizontal along the width of the carrot, so going across the carrot. So hence why the highlights will highlight these ridges to give that simplified carrot texture. When painting this first layer, you don't want to paint the carrot right next to the one that you just painted, otherwise that smooth blending process will spill into your carrots. Now if this is what you want to do, then go for it. But I wanted my carrots to be crisp and stand out as individual carrots, so I waited for the carrot to dry before painting right next to it. For this painting, I did mix the different tones for orange and green beforehand to make the wet on wet technique more manageable. When mixing colours, swatch them before you start painting, making sure that you like the colours you are using and you don't get any unwanted surprises. If you want to know what colours I used, my guesstimation of the colours will be on the screen now. For the wet on wet technique, make sure your page is not too wet and not to add too much water as this will cause your paint to separate and spread and you will get that patchy cauliflower effect which of the purposes of this painting I did not want. But when adding darker tones, I did dot the pigment around the general area of the shadows to give the carrots more variation and look less rigid and stiff. For the carrots furthest at the back of the bunch, I painted them darker as they would be the least in the light. Then I painted the stems with the same technique as the carrots but without the highlights and making sure that they both have a consistent light source direction. So for this painting, the light is coming from the top left. I did then start to paint the individual leaves and then I thought I would need to take a different approach and so I decided to come back to it. Then I went in with the darkest tones of the carrots and making a thin outline around each carrot following an illustrative style. Thank you. 
Then I added some shadows to the ridges of the carrots on the right side where there would be the most shadows. If you don't want to make the shadows very harsh, then you can always dilute the pigment by having a wet brush and dipping it into your pigment. Then I went back to paint the leaves, still painting individual leaves but more loosely and dotting around darker tones within the bunch of the leaves. Then I added the darkest tones to the stems and using that same tone, I painted more leaves attached to the stems. Then, because I accidentally had one spat of paint, I decided to do more sprinkles of paint, which helps aliven the painting up. Just make sure when you're doing this that your electronic devices are protected, and the table, and the other half of your sketchbook that you didn't want sprinkles of paint on. I may or may not have done all these things myself, so I'm telling you from first-hand experience. I did later realise and so hence the sketchbook peeking through on the left at the end. Well, this is all from me. Thank you so much for joining me doing this painting, keeping it fun and learning at the same time. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to show your support to see weekly videos. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.